KFI AM uh, 640 handle here, February uh, 25. A lot of controversy with uh, the LA Unified, as well as other governmental entities, police departments, etc., getting surplus military equipment from the, strangely enough, the military. And uh, there's been programs going on for years now where the military just hands over to police departments. In this case, this story, LA Unified. I mean, all kinds of fun stuff. Artillery pieces, uh, tanks, old airplanes, F-16s that have been mothballed. So. MREs. <laughs> what? MREs. <laughs> yeah, certainly MREs for this gold cafeteria. Yeah. Steve Gregory is here to talk about this. And uh, I've got some real questions. Sure. Because I can't imagine how stupid the opposition is on this. But I'll let Steve... Oh, uh, and here's the story. You I'll know, let Steve first talk before you interrupt me by talking. Oh, Steve, sorry, no, please, I would was, you... I was, doing a, I was doing what they call a smooth segue. <laughs> yes, it was. It was very smooth. <laughs> please, Steve, let's move by on. stepping on you. <laughs> Good morning, Bill. It, uh, yeah, this is all from the Department of Defense's 1033 program, which, as you mentioned, gives surplus equipment and gear to basically local and state law enforcement agencies. In this particular case, the LAUSD School Police Department had requested some equipment a while back, and it was delivered. Well, you know, as soon as the Ferguson, Missouri riots happened and they realized that this little police department in Ferguson, Missouri, was outfitted with military-grade equipment, people began to look at this going, how all of a sudden did this tiny police Mm -hmm. department have all this massive firepower? Now, we're talking about... uh we're not just talking about gear. Uh, we're talking about weaponry that they weaponry carried. That they carried. Yeah, they had uh, you know military grade assault rifles. They had uh, you know they had large armored vehicles. They had well, a lot's been made about this grenade launcher. And yes, it, it, there is. It's a grenade launcher, but it's been modified to also shoot you know like uh, tear gas canisters and things of that okay. nature for crowd dispersion. Right, it's like a potato gun. Yeah, something. Like, yeah, it's very similar like that. Yeah, nerf nerf gun. Yes, a little but a little more power. <laughs> So, you know, when people saw this going on in Ferguson, it got people to asking questions about this 1033 program and then come to find out that 1033 program was being utilized here at LAUSD. So groups, particularly the uh, Labor Community Strategy Center in Los Angeles, has been the biggest vocal critic of this program for the school. Eric Mann's the director of this program, and I, I sat down with him yesterday to talk to him about why he's not happy with the fact that the school district has now said it's given all the stuff back to the feds. M16s, an armored vehicle, and their grenade launchers. They've given it all back because of all the pressure that was put on the district. So in this cut A here, I ask Eric Mann, so, you know, what's the big deal? What kind of school system goes to the federal government, Department of Defense, and says, I'd like a tank, I'd like grenade launchers, and M16s to use against who? My students, the parents, and the community. That in itself is is a civil rights and a human rights violation. It's a moral disgrace. That's the core of the story. The story isn't when did they get weapons, when did they return the weapons. I ask you, why did you want those weapons? And you're going to pay for it. This fight is in no way over. It's just beginning. So basically, Eric says he wasn't happy with the district just simply saying, well, we've just given them back. And they sent a letter. The district sent a letter to this, this organization, this strategy center, and said, we've given all the stuff back now. Well, the strategy center is not happy with that. They wanted, you know, they want a little bit more than that. What do they want? Well, in cut B, he explains. We want the whole record. When did you apply? Could I please see the application? When did the tank show up? Who asked for this tank? Who called for the tank? Who called for the M16s? When did you return the M16s? Could I please see the invoice to make sure you did it? And each of you, Chair Zimmer, Superintendent King, Board Member McKenna, each of you must be held accountable. Yeah, so uh, I guess he says he needs all the records to prove. Right. Personal records? Anybody's been fired? Anybody's been accused? I no. mean, does he want the records of everything that has ever happened? They don't owe him any duty of well, reporting. And here's the thing, that the reason this, this group is so upset, because while this program was being implemented in the school police department, they were working with the district to to sort of soften the police's presence and activities on campuses they had concerns about civil right violations what they called civil rights violations in you know in handcuffing students for truancy they had some civil rights issues and concerns so eric was talking about the fact that while we're negotiating with the district 
about the civil rights issues behind our backs and in the cloak of darkness, the district's rolling in armored vehicles, grenade launchers, and guns. All right, well, let's, let's talk about the armored vehicles and the grenade launchers. Uh, if you, as you describe it, uh, the grenade launchers have been modified to to throw they're, tear, they're for tear gas. Yeah. Okay, they're, they're so not, it's not it's so they're not, not using it for device. grenades. Yeah, it's not an explosive okay. device. So no. that's number one, and it's interesting what he asked and said. What are these going to be used for? Uh, on students, on parents? Did he ever mention shootings? For example, Sandy Hook. Did he ever mention San Bernardino that could have happened? Uh, on a school ground that he ever mentioned that they have to get in as quickly as possible? Does that none of that exist? It's only against students. Is that his position? Well, in cut C here, I asked him a little bit more about this and, and you know, his concerns in the big picture. I need every serial number of the weapon you got, every serial number of the weapon you returned. Do they match up one by one, bullet by bullet? And then, yeah, if we zeroed you out, that doesn't end the moral problem, but at least it ends the so-called technical problem. Right now, they just sent us a letter and said, don't worry about mm. it. We we'll return these weapons. You think I would trust somebody who, first of all, brought these weapons in under cover of night? The Labor Community Strategy Center was negotiating with the school boards over civil rights concerns. They said, we agree with you. There's a lot of problems. There may be some police problems here. Very frankly, we thought we were making some progress with these people. We'd so I, I was still stunned that he that anybody would take him seriously. Every well, I, serial number, every weapon, every piece of ammunition. Uh, does he want everybody who's involved arrested? Did he go that far? I'm just getting really pissed off here. I can see, Bill, your little head is getting red. Well, I, you know, I can't. I can't stand these people who make this kind of demand. I can't stand you for doing this story and talk taking to, them seriously. Talk to my boss; he assigned it to me. It's called the Strategy Center. Uh, that is, I guess, is it a watchdog group well, over LA Unified? Not, not necessarily. They're the, this is the organization that created the Bus Riders Union, and this is a this is a, an organization with a little bit of juice. I mean, they're the ones that got the MTA. They sued the MTA for better buses and for basically rate basically rate control right. to make sure they didn't keep raising rates because it was affecting poor people. So uh, the director, Eric Mann, uh, said, we're not happy with the fact that we got a letter from you returning all of the equipment, right. giving up all of the military-grade equipment. We want to see every invoice, every letter. We want to see every uh, ID number, every registration, everybody who signed off. We want everything to we make sure... Proof. Uh, we want proof, and uh, my guess is he's so crazy is then proof that it wasn't forged. <laughs> well, I don't know about that, but I can tell you that uh, I think they're more upset at the fact that they don't. He, he says I don't understand why a school district has to have such firepower. And I said, you know, Eric, what about active shooter situations? This is a huge deal now. I said, shouldn't a school police department be ready to protect itself because it can respond quicker to a situation than an outside police agency? And here's what he said. We'd be happy to sit down with community people and police and say, let's look at a real scenario. We agree there's a problem. We don't deny the problem is we, we think there's a terrible overreaction that's not solving the problem or creating an even bigger one. If we really want to discuss active shooter, we'll sit down with the police and the community and say, all right, this is a reasonable conversation. Let's have a reasonable response. But you didn't bring in these tanks for that. You didn't bring in M16s. Let's not lie to each other. That's the problem. There hasn't been a decency of conversation. You know what? Uh, they have to talk to this guy about tactics and strategy, and he's going to be part of the conversation of when an active shooter has to be dealt with and how. I'm assuming he has 30 years of policing and uh, logistics, right? I do not know his background. But I, I, I find that astounding that he is going to decide as when an active shooter, and by the way, they're overreacting to active shooters. Has there ever been an argument that there's an overreaction to shooters in a building? Well, and, and if you talk to police, and I mean, here's the thing, and he also said that the police department there are all good people. He never had anything bad to say about the police department. His issues with tactics and, and sort of the, the, uh, the, the aggressive nature against the kids with the, on the part of the, of the police officers, he was also upset. I can see that. He said, no, I can, I can see that they're handcuffing, et cetera. I guess he has a problem with uh, the tanks running over kids in the playground. Is that his problem? 
Well, let's be clear. These are not tanks. These no, are, I know. There yeah. are, and he kept saying tanks. I know. They are, don't they are, what they are are uh, effectively it's personnel a, carriers, it's right? It's an armored vehicle that, right. that, was, that protects. That, that but, was armored for explosives, basically. But it's, right. those vehicles are used so like officers can stand behind it. It's, it's used as a shield, basically. It's not used to go plow over people. And so anyway, that, that being said, he also said that he's not going to stop with the LAUSD. He wants to go nationwide with this. He wants them. President Obama modified the 1033 program after Ferguson last year. And there's been a lot of talk about whether or not the whole program should be shut down. So here in the final cut E, he says he wants this thing to go national. The Strategy Center is organizing a national campaign to ask President Obama to entirely end the 1033 program. Dismantle it, take all the weapons back, and kill it. What do you do with all the surplus? We say, uh, what do we say, what do the people say, don't return it, burn it. Don't use it against somebody else. We, if you have surplus weapons, sell them and buy some textbooks. Wow. Sell them to who? Well, I almost asked that, I, but then I, yeah, I, it, yeah, it's exactly. Then do they go out and start saying these people shouldn't have it? You, U.S. sold us weapons. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, and, but you you were saying they have some juice. I mean, with this kind of ridiculousness, and to me, it is ridiculous. When you start to militarize a school police department, there are concerns, and there are concerns with this police. And state. I don't have a problem with that. So I, you, the the point is that we let's talk about big picture, but. We want to be in on the discussion of tactics. We want to be in the discussion of how the policing is. Uh, this is a policing organization? Not at all. It's a community organization. 